Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you're well and in this video I want to share with you some really important tips on how to get selected in almost any software development job interview. So the, the title might seem very, very similar to the video that I've already created where I've talked about how to get a software development job of your dreams. But in this video, I'll be tackling completely something completely different, right? The titles look same, but the content is completely different, all right? Here I want to talk, talk to you about uh, a different, uh, you know, uh, approach. So there I, I, I was talking about how to get a job in the sense how to, you know, start approaching the whole job uh, seeking process. But now, uh, let's say you got the interview and now you want to uh, basically, uh, you know, crack it. How do you how do you do it? So I'll tell you uh, that you know a software uh, development recruiter or technical recruiter is looking for these four different things in a uh, in a candidate, right? So these four different things I'll talk about these. I'll explain to you what these are and I'll explain to you uh, you know uh, their importance and how you can improve upon them. But I want to talk about something that you don't know uh, is is is. Uh, is, is, is they always there in the background. There's something that you don't know about. So you know about these four different things. You probably know that skills are important, communication is very important, brand name is important, profile is important to get a software development job, right? But I have been on the interview panels, like I, like I told you in the previous video, I've been on the interview panels of many Fortune 500 companies. And they keep people like me on the panel so that, uh, you know, they don't get biased because if they're only their employees are, you know, looking for uh, a candidate, they, they sometimes get biased or sometimes, you know, uh, the group dynamics uh, work in a way that a particular opinion wins. But if there are people like me to equate the, uh, the whole, uh, you know, situation there, then they get more diverse, more, uh, you know, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, more balanced individuals. So... Uh, from what I've seen on on the top companies on uh, by being on the top top companies interview panels is that even if these four things are weak still some people get selected and so that's the thing that I want to talk about right that that's the thing that almost nobody considers and almost and you probably you've never uh, even thought uh, about this whole problem in that way so even if you ha are quite weak in these four different things right even if you're average and there are people who are way way b better than you in these four different things there, there are some things that can still uh, help you to get, uh, like crack that interview. All right, so first let me talk about these four things and then let me talk about the thing that, you know, that nobody talks about. So first is skills, right? So this is your coding abilities, your skills, technical skills. So this, this these will be tested in your technical rounds, right? Your coding rounds where you, you're set up on a, a video call. So your ability to break down problems, your complex thinking, and your complex thinking in the sense your uh, data structures and algorithms and your coding abilities, right? All of that will be tested in your skills. This, obviously you know that you have to be really good at this, right? And second thing that they really value is communication. By communication, I don't just mean the, the way you speak English, right? You're just your communication skills. It's not just that. It's about, are you a person who, who would collaborate, you know, or are you somebody who just keeps on free riding in the sense that the team is doing something and you, you just don't bother and, you're, you know, you're just relaxing. So uh, do you have a collaborative mindset in terms of do you take feedback, do you take criticism, right? What's your attitude? Is it always positive or are you always thinking about the negatives? How responsive are you or, you know, do you keep chilling out or do you, or do you always respond to emails or communication quickly? And how uh, then the fourth priority is your articulation in the sense how well you are able to express your ideas. So that's notice, please notice that this is the fourth thing, right? There's so many things before that in communication. So people forget that people just think uh, uh, communication is, uh, you know, ability to just communicate with people. But uh, there's there's no point in being a great articulator if you're just an asshole, right? You have to have a collaborative attitude. You have to have a very good positive attitude. You have to be very responsive. And then the fourth part is articulation. If you're weak in the articulation and you're very, you have a very good attitude, uh, they will ignore all the, your articulation. Trust me, all right? Then comes brand name. So for brand name, if you're from obviously Fangul, which is Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Uber, and LinkedIn, if you're from these Fangul companies, uh, I know people say Fang, but I say Fangul because Uber and LinkedIn are also pretty pretty awesome. So if you're from these companies, you have a very strong uh, chance of getting selected anywhere else. You know that. You obviously, obviously you already know that. And then after that is the second stage, which which are the unicorns, which are like Atlassian, Slack, and all these huge, which were startups, but now they're huge companies, so they have like really cutting edge innovation and cutting edge technology. If you're from these companies, uh, you know you have a brand name on your CV, you will get selected. So that's what this is what they're looking for. They're looking for skills, they're looking for communication, they're looking for brand name. The fourth part they're looking for is profile. So how many years of experience do you have? Do you have just six months of experience in a company like Atlassian? That doesn't amount to much, right? Because you're not really set in their ways. You don't have you don't um, have what it takes. You don't, you've not you don't not you're not uh, taken up the uh, you know th way of thinking of how an Atlassian employee thinks about problems. 
So uh, your years of experience matters, your technologies and languages. So if you have just uh, uh, command over one language or you can you know, work with multiple languages or you're a polyglot developer. Do you have just an experience with Docker or do you, do you know Docker and Kubernetes and Jenkins? So like how many technologies do you know? And, um, and the third thing that matters is public accolades, which is basically you know, how successful are you on GitHub or Stack Overflow? Or do you have your own blog? Do you have your own website? How you know, strong is your profile on LinkedIn? So all those diff the different things are public accolades. Have you won, won any awards? Were you in, let's say, the Google uh, you know, award winner for some coding competition, hackathons and all? So that's, that's number three, right? Public accolades is number three on this list. Uh, so these are the four things that you know, you probably knew about. I mean, if, if you're a developer, you probably knew, knew that if you work on these four different things in, in this different, uh, uh, you know, and these different aspects of these different uh, things, then you you can get a good job, right? But uh, like I said, you know, I've seen people who don't have this uh, still get selected. So let me talk about that. Now, uh, there are people who, who work on projects which somehow, you know, get really successful. So uh, let's say, uh, a company like um, Calm. So there's an app called Calm, C A L M. And now they have about, uh, I think, about more than 10 million downloads, right? So if you are somebody who joined the Calm team uh, as a developer, and then you saw the entire process right from prototyping to actually building the product and then the product getting scaled to, uh, let's say, um, you know, 10 million users, now that's a huge, huge thing. If you have something like that on your CV, all these four things become really, really small. As in, uh, you know, even somebody who has Facebook, Netflix experience, uh, they also don't compare to what you have. So that will be something very valuable. So the, the the advice that I'm trying to give you here is that always look for companies, do, do, not based on how much money you'll be making, but the kind of work that you'll be doing. In a sense, will this app, uh, will this project give me the experience to work on a project from an, of an app or a software from the beginning to the end of the software development lifecycle to the scaling part? Right, so we think that only building a product is very important, but it's also you know troubleshooting, scaling, all those different skills add up. You see the the product to complete maturity of the life cycle, right? All the complete CI/CD, how new features get built, and how do you think about new features, and what are the challenges that, that you faced when you were building new features and the, the old software got uh, you know started crashing. So all of those different things, if you're think, able to think about, that's what uh, is a very valuable employee to any any awesome company, any company that is going to give you a lot of money. Uh, they're looking for that. So, uh, so what I recommend is that uh, in the beginning of your career, not going for money, not going for something that sounds cool, but but getting to work on a project or a company that helps you to see the entire process. So, let's say if you were a developer who worked for the app called Calm, or the app called let's say uh, I don't know, and I don't remember any other apps actually. There, there are so many more. I, I know. But I just don't remember. But uh, but I'm sure you get the I'm sure you get the idea, right? That if an app, uh, you know, you you were there from in the beginning, and then let's say two years later, the app is in the Play Store, and now they're getting a lot of users. Uh, that's very very good on your CV. So that will just having that uh, will will make people kind of ignore all these things. So this has happened with me in the sense when I was on uh, the panel, and I used to keep keep checking people on these different skills. And then there were some people who just had uh, an app that you know got let's say. Uh, 1 million downloads or 100,000, even 100,000 downloads, right? Or even 50,000 downloads. But they were in the process from the beginning to the end. If you work for Facebook, you obviously, you don't, you've not, you know, built Facebook from scratch, right? You've not seen the entire life cycle. But if you're somebody who's built a new product with a new company as a, as a startup engineer, and you built it from scratch to a place and you took it to, uh, to, to the scaling mode, uh, you can ask almost, uh, you, you can ask a huge amount uh, in the market and and uh, recruiters wouldn't want you to know this and they would want to you to uh, you know undervalue yourself but if you, if you have this kind of experience you have a huge amount of value in the market because that's something that uh, all companies are looking for so um, that's the fifth part that i want to uh, wanted to talk about i want to tell you that if you have that if you somehow chase that if you always are focused on that and if you take that experience to a job interview uh, i don't think there's anybody who can actually reject you i mean if they're rejecting you they're just really really stupid and they just don't know what they're looking for really so this is uh, the tip that I want to share with you, and this is going to serve you a lot in your life. So as a, as a software engineer, if I knew this before, I would have really focused on just this, and it would have saved me years of years of uh, you know uh, messing around. So I, that's what I want to do for you. I want to save you time and you know uh, months of experimenting and years of experimenting. I've given you the right advice that you you know need to have. So just go uh, just go and look for a company that helps you work on the entire uh, life cycle of the product right from inception to uh, you know uh, launch to market to scaling it 
And then when you start looking for companies, man, you're, uh, you're almost like CTO level material, right? Nobody can reject you. So thank you for watching and uh, I hope you stick around with my channel, you subscribe and you become a CTO with me because I help you build products uh, and projects not, and not just teach you technologies. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.